Hey everyone. I'm just gonna give everybody about another minute to join up and get sharpened up and get ready and we'll get started. Okay, everybody, how are you today? It is Wednesday, May the 6th. It is a beautiful sunny day outside, and I'm excited to draw today. <clears throat> Hope you guys are too. Oh, I woke up feeling a little, feeling a little saucy, a little sassy, a little silly, a little crazy. So I thought today would be a good day to do a fun animal that has a lot of interesting and hilarious habits and before I reveal that just make sure you got a black marker colored pencils and a sharpener of course we're gonna need paper a hard flat surface and these wonderful smiles that we love so much alright so get ready to draw today a llama llamas are cool they're like the new hip fun, popular, uh, you know, animal in the kingdom. I dig llamas. They're sweet. Uh, so just like usual, we're going to do our black outline. You follow along with me. We'll do a couple of hopefully relatively easy guidelines before we start putting in this color. I've decided to do a pink llama. As you can see here, you have the opportunity to do any color llama today you would like. You could do a blue one or a green one or a purple one. Any color. Just take note here that there's a lot of white paper showing through here. A lot of our color is going to be concentrated around the features. And we're going to let, a, let some of this white paper show through today in order to create contrast. Um, There'll be a point in the drawing where if you do want to lightly shade your whole llama in, say, a light yellow or a light pink or whatever, uh, there is going to be an opportunity to do that. Um, my preference, however, today, I just wanted to leave some white showing through to make my llama look like he's a very, very light pink color. So I'm going to let you take a look at this. I'm going to let you drink in all these cool features, and I'll be back in about 30 to 60 seconds.
All right, what do you say we get started? Going to just get myself a nice, fresh sheet of paper here. Voila! Put this guy over here. All right, let's get going. So, I got my black marker, and that's what I'll be starting with today, just like usual. And, of course, we will be starting with our llama's nose. We're going to find the middle of the page. Boop. Boop. There it is. Okay. So we're going to start with the nose. And there's a couple of interesting little shapes in here. Um, the first one is almost kind of like that flying bird shape that we've done before. And it's just a, it's, it's kind of soft. Okay. So it's going to come up. It's going to come down in the middle. It's going to come back up. And we're going to go back down towards the end there. So right in the middle of the page, that's where I'm going to want this dip to be. All right. So I'm just going to come up like this, dip down towards the middle, back up, and back down. The next line is almost the same. It's just going to dip down a lot lower. Well, not a lot lower. It's going to dip, dip down lower than this. All right. But it's pretty much the same line. You can watch me and then do yours. Up, dipping lower, and back over. Okay, pretty easy so far, right? The next line is going to be two little arc lines, little curved little lines, and they're going to go on the outside, on either side, of the line we just made. And they look just like this. Arc line, arc line. That's it. All right, we're going to keep working this nose here. And the next series of lines we're going to make is two more arc lines. They're going to come in towards the middle of the nose, and they're going to be on top. And they look just like this. There you go. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just like that is fine. All righty. I'm going to work down towards the mouth here now, okay? And just to get that started, I'm going to draw a straight line right down from the middle of the bottom of the nose, just like that. If you're just joining and you'd like to know what we're drawing, we are drawing a llama today. And if you're late and you're drawing, go ahead and see if you can't get this shape into the middle of your page at this point and play a little game of catch up with us. For now, I'm going to keep moving along with my llama's mouth. We've done this sort of line before. Uh, it's going to be a sort of a wide U shape with somewhat of a flat bottom. This is going to be, oh, you know, I guess these little cheek areas of the llama. And they look just like this. They come out a little bit further than the nose. Of course, I want to do the same thing on the other side. Doesn't have to be perfect. You know what I say about when things are not perfect, they add character to our creatures. Okay. And next thing, we're just going to add in a little bit of a chin down here. And that's very easy. It's sort of, oh, I guess a part of a circle. But I'm going to kind of give the sides a little bit of an angle. Just like this.
All right, so that is the nose and mouth area. Now I'm going to work up a little bit, and I'm going to work in these eyes. And the eyes of the llama are quite big, okay? So they're going to take a little bit of focus to make sure you get these lines in correctly because they're going to be the second largest feature on this animal. And the largest feature, of course, is these big ears. But let's focus on the eyes for now. The eyes are going to have on the top a wavy line. And what I mean by wavy, it's going to be, it's going to come down, it's going to come up, and it's going to come down, and it's going to come up at the end. So it's got sort of two dips in it, I suppose. They're going to start, these two lines are going to start relatively close to the nose, but not too close, not touching, and not connected. I'm going to come up from where about the outside of the nose is, okay? and start just above where I've got the top of these two arc lines. And this line looks like this. Wavy line, down, up, down, up. And of course, I wanna do the same line on the other side. Starting about the outside of the nose, down, up, down, up. There we go. See how big those eyes are? Wow. Okay, so next I'm going to draw the sides of the eyes. I'm going to come in from the outside. I'm going to let this line kind of hang out there. I'm going to draw an arc line. It comes down towards the face, just like this. And of course, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Arc line down towards the face. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is connect the bottom of the eye to the top of the eye. And it's going to be another arc line. It's not going to connect to the end of this wavy line. It's going to connect right where that bottom little dip is, I suppose. And it looks just like this. And of course, we're going to do the same on the other side. It's okay to connect it there if you'd like. And you'll see why in just a moment. And there's in my other arc line. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is sort of rough in where I think the side of the face might be. I'm going to use these familiar lightning bolt lines or zigzagging lines. I'm going to start outside the bottom of the eye. I'm not going to connect it. And I'm going to come down probably to about under the chin, maybe just outside where I think the cheek is going to end. So this zigzag line is going to look something like this. How's that? I'm going to keep coming down, actually. I want to come down a little bit further. How about like that? That's about where I'd like it. And of course, I want to do the same thing on the other side, starting outside the eye, zigzagging or lightning bolt line down to about the bottom of the chin, aligning maybe with the side of the cheek, just like this. That doesn't have to be perfect. And while I'm here, I'm going to work in a couple lines that are going to help guide the neck. Now, I'm going to do this in two steps, each side in two steps. So it's going to be two series of lines. And that's because the lines at the top are going to kind of go in a different direction as the lines at the bottom. So watch me and then try it yourself. I'm going to start with the neck. I'm going to do a lightning bolt or a zigzagging line about here. 
I'm going to come down straight heading out towards the edge of the page a little bit. I'm going to stop early because I'm going to do another line down here. Watch me and then do this one yourself. And the same on the other side. <laughs> Next series of lines going to be the bottom of the neck. They're not going to connect here. And they're going to come out this way. There we go. And while I'm still working on the neck, I'm going to make a couple of guidelines in here where the throat might be heading down. And again, this is just a little bit of a guideline to help guide some color we're going to add later on. I'm going to make a couple lightning bolt like that, like that, like that, and like that. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and get ready to work in the ears, and we'll have one more thing to add after that before we get to color. So the ears, oh, they're pretty easy. We're going to be doing one big line up here, but before we get there, I just want to make a little bit of a line out here so that I know where I start. And so this is going to be another sort of lightning bolt line. It's going to aim out towards the end of this I don't know, eyelash or eyebrow, you don't need to connect it. It looks just like this. And I want to do the same on the other side. Make that a little bit longer. All right. So here's where we're going to draw the big outside of the ear, okay? The way we're going to do that is we're going to come in from the top of the line we just made. And then we're going to sweep up like this. You don't have to go, don't, don't go too close to the top of the page. We're going to get color in there, so that'll make the ear look finished. But for now, we're just going to rough in this guideline, okay? Just like this. Come in a little bit more. And then, whoop, just like that. I suppose that could be an S-curve line. If we want to put a familiar name on it, do the same on the other side. Come in, and up, whoop. Okay. A few more lines to finish off the ears. Now, this is a little tricky, but I believe that you guys can do this. It's not anything different from things we've done before. Just follow along with me while I explain it. I'll make the line, and then you can make yours at home. I'm going to come in to about, oh, let's say the, what's this, the eyebrow, the inside of the eyebrow, this wavy line we made earlier, right? I'm going to come up to about where this, this dip is here, maybe just a tad higher. And I'm going to make a big line that comes up like this. Big line comes back down, and then a couple little wiggles. All right, so watch this, and then you can do yours at home. I'm going to come all the, almost all the way up, back, choo -choo -choo -choo, just like that. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Coming from the uh, inside of the eyebrow area, way up. Way down, and then a couple little wiggles. This is going to be the inside of the ear area, so we're going to fill all this in with nice color, okay? Don't worry too much. Before we move on to color, we're going to color in the eyes with our black marker. Well, we want to make sure that there's these really cool highlights left behind in those eyes. We don't want to fill the whole eye in. I want to put these cool, cool highlights in the eye. So the way I'm going to do that, before I color my eye in black, I'm going to draw a very 
oh man, like almost as big as I can fit it in there. A big banana shape. All right? Watch me and then do this yourself at home. It's going to be a big banana shape in there. Ooh. You see that? Draw that yourself now. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Big banana shape. Or maybe it's a green bean. Or, oh, I don't know. A banana was kind of the way I was thinking about it. And now that I've got those banana shapes in there, I'm going to go ahead and color in the rest, or fill in the rest of it, I guess, black. There we go. That already looks like a llama. Okay. I am going to put the cap on my black marker. Because I'm getting ready to add do, 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 color. All right. So as I mentioned earlier, I decided today to do a pink llama. I thought that would be fun. So, in order to do my pink llama, I chose three different shades of pink. So if you could get three different shades of whatever color your llama is gonna be today, why don't you go ahead and figure out what those three colors are going to be. If you're gonna do green, dark green, regular green, and light green, or yellow, something like that. Uh, but because I'm doing pink, I got dark red, pink, and light pink. I'll give you 15 seconds or so to make your decision. Okay, so I've got my three colors ready to go, and I hope you do too. I'm going to start like I usually do with my darkest color. For me, it's dark red because I'm working with a pink llama today. So the first thing I like to do is use my imagination a little bit to figure out where the darkest areas of this llama might be. And I'm going to start with the ears because I am a thousand percent sure... It's really dark in there. I'm just going to add some dark just like that. Not too much. I'll do it over here too. There we go. I'd also like to add some of this under the eyes. And I'm using that technique where I'm using the direction of my pencil to sort of uh, help me imagine the direction of the fur, how the fur might be growing. So I'm still using that technique that I do so often, I think it just helps build shape, uh, give it a little bit of musculature or anatomy look to it. And also, it helps our imagination picture this llama a little more realistic. Do the same thing on this side. Both top and bottom of the eye. All right. I'm going to do the nose. Just like that, we're going to come in here with more color, so don't worry about it too much. Let's do the here as well. The whole snout of our llama is going to be a little bit darker than the rest of his body, or the, sorry, the rest of his face and neck. Maybe there's a little bit up there. There's a little bit out here. All right, it's definitely going to give him some out here. Let's give him a lot, actually. Let's give him a lot right there. And let's give some right here. All right. Maybe a little bit more right there. 
and some on the top of the nose there. All right, <clears throat> it's feeling pretty good. So I'm gonna move on from my darkest color. I'm gonna get my second color as I work from dark to light. And that for me is sort of this rich, vibrant pink. And what I'm gonna do with this today is a little different than what I usually, I chase my colors around or wrap my dark color in my second color. Today I'm gonna kind of do that, but I'm also gonna color directly over what I've already done. So I'll start here. Let's see, I'm just adding that second color in there. We some scribbles. Maybe it comes out a little bit further now. Doing the same thing above the eyes, kind of coloring right this second color right over it, and maybe just coming out a little bit further than I had the dark color before. And what I mean by that is just pulling these colors a little beyond where I ended my dark, but not too far. We want to be very, very conscious of how much color we're putting down today because we want this white space to look like fur uh, when we get, when we're finished up. All right, so I'm still coloring to right over my darker color. Coming down a little bit further than I did before. Maybe there's a little bit more out here. And maybe it comes to a little bit, starting to mix in down there. Let's see, add some more in here. Maybe there's some down there. Add some more over the whole nose, I think. Let's do that. Over the whole nose. There we go. All right, I think I'm just gonna put a little bit more in here. Fill that up. Maybe pull some out towards the edge. Alrighty, that looks pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna put my, whoops, wait, whoop, whoop, I'm gonna chuck my pencil across the room. I'm gonna put my second color down and I'm gonna get my third value, which is this very, very light pink. And sort of that same idea. I'm gonna use this to color over all the colors I've already applied and then also let it go beyond that a bit so that we're seeing a little bit of this light color. I'm not going to push down too hard here. I want this to be, um, you know, barely there. I want this to sort of fill in some of the scribble gaps and, you know, begin to head out towards the edge and give this a little bit more color heading into the white space. But again, I want to leave some of that white space here. So like I said, I'm just gonna lightly add this in the same technique. I've done the first two colors. I'm just gonna bring it out a little bit further. Same thing up here, kind of color over everything that I've already done, but let this color come out beyond a little bit more. Okay, same thing here, same thing here. All around the eye. I'm also going to use this color here to sort of work up the ear a little bit. And maybe he's got some squiggly hairs there. All right, I'm just going to continue this. I'm going to bring a little bit that little bit of this light pink down the side of the face. Okay. I'm going to use this light pink to shade in pretty much the whole rest of the nose. Going right over all the other colors I put there. And maybe there's just a little bit of a, a little bit of this coming across in between the eyes. And very lightly, not too dark. Same thing, maybe there's a little bit of this color under the mouth. All right, still coloring right over all these previous colors. I bring a little bit of this light pink down the side of the neck. All right. Okay. I'm just going to bring some of this across the top of the ear. 
All right, so I think that looks pretty cool. I'm going to put this lightest color aside and just take one second to explain the next thing I'd like to do. So we have colored in our three values of whatever color you've decided to draw your llama today. And in order to really bring these colors out, let's think about what other light color might go well with this. Now for me, because I chose this red color today, I think that if I added a little bit of gold to some of these darker areas, it's going to give me a little bit more of a richer color fur. But I don't want to overkill this. I'm going to use gold to fill in some of the leftover scribble gaps in my dark colors. All right, I'm not going to push down too hard. I just want this color. I don't want it to overtake. I don't want my whole drawing to turn into an orange llama. I just want to do a little bit of this gold to make my pink come to life. All right, just very, very little bit of it. I'm going to use it inside the ears, as you just saw. I'm going to do a little bit above the eyes. All right, I'm going to do a little bit below the eyes. Just a little here. We're not trying to recolor everything. We just want a little bit of this to help the other colors out a little bit. Maybe there's a little bit of it in here around where the mouth connects and the lips are. You could put a little bit of it in this darker fur down here. Just a little. We're not, again, we don't want too much of this. This is just to make our colors pop a little bit better. I'm going to do a little bit above the nose, too. Yeah, that's starting to really kind of make that pink come to life. All right, I'm putting that gold down. I think I've got enough there. Now, my next color decision is based on the information I gave you a couple drawings ago about opposite colors. So... Just to recap, the opposite of blue is orange, the opposite of red is green, the opposite of purple is yellow. So with keeping that in mind, I just added this little bit of gold that actually over my pink created a little bit of orange. So I'm going to use the opposite of that color that got created and go with blue. You don't have to, you don't have to adhere to that rule hard and fast. You can use whatever color you'd like. I'm going to add a darker color though. So you could even add brown here or just something darker um, than most of your other colors. So like I said, I chose blue and I'm gonna use this blue to shade in the nose a little bit. I'm gonna use this blue to add a little bit of shadow. I'm gonna add some in the ears. And after I do all that, I'll show you a little trick that's gonna make this white area look a lot more like fur. So, as promised, I'll start in the ear. I'm just going to add some of this dark color right inside the ear. Add a little bit under the eyes. Not too much. A little bit. An accidental eyelash, no big deal. All right. And like I said, I want to shade in the nose here lightly shading right over the pink I've already got down. Just the nose, not the whole snout. Alrighty. We'll add a little bit in the nostril as a shadow. Just a little bit, not too much. We'll do a little bit where the mouth connects and give it a little shadow there, not too much. Add, add a little bit under here and up here, a little bit under here and up here. Okay. So now that we've got our little bit of shading done with the blue that we wanted to do, okay, I do want to show you something cool. I'm going to use this same blue pencil in what might be a little bit of a new way. I don't know if we've really used this technique before. But I'm going to use it to make little tiny lines. And I want to, again, do this in a way that my imagination, that will inform my imagination that this white is fur. 
I'm not going to make too many of these. But let's just watch what happens when I just go like this. And we're just doing these little, little, tiny, little, tiny dots, little, tiny lines in very deliberate places. Look at how that really starts to look like fur. We'll do some more up here. These are just these little, little, little tiny lines. And we'll get some up going up the ear here. And maybe they keep going. Up here. Let's put a couple in here. Alright. Put a couple more. Maybe down here on the chin. Let's put some of this in here. Down on the lower part of the cheek. Maybe a Maybe there's a bunch of them in there where the fur is really dense. All right, I'm going to get a bunch of them up here. There we go. He's cute. He just made me laugh. That's how cute this guy is. Do a few more right on the outside of the nose, and that's it. That's it. I'm not going to overdo this technique. I don't want to take away from my white space too much. Wow, we are flying today, huh? I'm going to put a few more of these inside the ear. I know I said I wasn't going to overdo this, but I really want some in here. There we go. Hi. I was saying hi to my dog. She was nudging me in the knee. What do you want? Okay, girly, I'm almost done. Get out of here. I'm just going to add some more of these in this nose here. Okay, I think that's enough of these little hair technique addition here. And I think what I'm going to do, because I have a little extra time, is add a little more dark. I want to just darken the inside of the ear. This is purple. And I'm using this in the opposite direction to darken the inside of the ear a little. I am also going to use this purple way out here. Give this a little bit of shape. You can see that I'm darkening the very, very outside here. And that's helping to give my llama a little bit more, I guess, roundness. I'll do the same thing here. Just a little bit more shape. All right, I'm still got my purple here. I'm going to darken the bottom of the nose a little bit. There we go. Okay. Looking pretty cool, huh? All right. Well, look at that. We've got a pink llama. Uh, before I sign my work, I'm going to just grab my marker, and I just want to add a couple tiny, tiny little details before I call this bad Larry done. I'm going to color in right in there to make it look like maybe we're seeing a little bit of lip or maybe his mouth is open a tiny bit. I'm going to put a little bit of this black on the inside of the nostril. It looks darker there. There we go. And I just want to fix this shape so that it's perfect. Whoop. There we go. Nice and solid around the outside of the eyes there. Okay, we are done with our llama, and it only took us 40 minutes. And I totally dig him. I think he's super cool. I don't think llamas have whiskers. So we're not going to do whiskers today, even though that's a fun thing to do. I'm going to choose a color to sign my work today, and I think I'm going to choose turquoise. Uh, so anyway, guys, I hope you had fun today. I thought this llama was super hip, super fun. He's pretty cute. I like the pink llama. He's my new best friend. And uh, I hope you guys had fun today. I sure as heck did. Um, I hope you have this very hip llama in front of you that you're excited about. 
Uh, have a great day. Again, it is Wednesday. I will see you Friday. Be good to your parents and they'll be good to you. Don't forget to <whistles> smile. Very important. Be happy. Bye, guys. Do, 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 do.